Well, good morning. You're in for another treat today as we celebrate good friend Ed and his parents, Madeline and Bill, and all of their family. And we're gonna go ahead and make one of their family recipes. That's an heirloom recipe that they love, and it's a great memory of their Aunt Marie. And it's just a simple rhubarb cake. And I don't know about you, but I love rhubarb and a variety of different things, but we're gonna go ahead and make that today in celebration of Ed and his family today. And I would say that Ed is actually right up there in the best friend category. And actually, I'm, I'm lucky to be part of that family because of marriage. So it is my, is Chris's best friend and his family. But I am so lucky and blessed that I have been married into this family because this is definitely a second home for us. Now, I know we have multiple second homes, so you know, you already know that. We're gonna just go with that. But truly, Bill and Madeline, Ed's parents, are like second parents to us because they also treat us as if they're just right along with their kids, like we're adopted kids. And they do that with all so many people in their lives and they just bring people to them and they interact between each other and they, they all become like, you know, friends become family. And they have four kids of their own, Bill and Madeline do, and Ed is one of the, the kids. But they treat us as if we're just a couple more of the kids in their family. So this is a great way to celebrate them today. And I'm wearing a Peter Gabriel and Sting t-shirt. It was the combination of both Peter Gabriel and Sting when they went on tour together in 2016. It's the Rock, Paper, Scissors tour. Great concert, great collaboration, very inspiring, the two of them together. And Ed and Chris and I went to the concert at the Palace of Auburn Hills in 2016 and had just an absolutely wonderful experience. And we did do the pre kind of experience. We did not meet them, but had a great like hors d'oeuvre kind of interaction session ahead of time and learned some interesting things about each one of them, what happens when they're on tour. Like, you know, Sting does yoga and uh, Peter Gabriel is more of a, rides his bike around wherever he, where he's at. So just some interesting insight into what they're like when they travel and just some great renaissance, great musicianship and great, it was a great concert. So we're gonna celebrate Ed and his parents today with this wonderful rhubarb cake by their Aunt Marie. I'm gonna go ahead and read the recipe to you because it is one that was texted to me and I did print off, but I am not gonna go ahead and post it. So it is this rhubarb cake that I mentioned. It is one and a half cups of sugar, two cups of flour, two eggs, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of vanilla, half cup oleo, one cup milk, one half teaspoon salt, one teaspoon baking soda, two cups of rhubarb cut small. We're going to cream the sugar and the oleo together. We're gonna to add the eggs to that. We're gonna mix the dry ingredients separately and then add to that wet mixture. Alternately though, with the milk and the vanilla, and then we'll stir in the rhubarb at the end. This does have a separate topping that you put on top before you bake. That would be a half cup sugar, one cup of coconut, quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. You stir those together and put on top of the cake before you bake. You do go ahead and grease a nine by 13 pan. You put it in an oven at 350 degrees and you bake for 50 minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I have not made this recipe before, so it's gonna be fun to go ahead and do it together. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna mix the dry ingredients together. I have already gone ahead and creamed the one and a half cups of sugar with the half cup of oleo. So that has creamed already. So now I have not added the eggs to it yet, but I'm gonna go ahead and do our dry ingredients. So we're gonna go ahead and do that so you can see what I'm doing. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the dry ingredients and I'll, I'll repeat the steps again. So if we're gonna do the dry ingredients, I'm gonna go ahead and add two cups of flour to my, my mixing bowl here. Oh, and I almost forgot the dough whisk. I don't know how I could forget that. It's like its own feature. So like I said, two cups of flour. And now, you know, we spend a lot of time with Ed and his family because it's just so natural. It's as if, we'd, it's as if we were their own kids. And we spend time 
at their home in Romeo, but we also have visited them when they go to Florida each year, when Ed's down there as well. So it's, we go and visit Ed and Madeline with, with Ed and stay in their condo. And we have had, well, and, and many occasions have had just amazing times. They rent a place in Mark, at Marco Island in Florida. And again, like I say, they treat us just as like one of the kids. So when we've gone down to stay with them, We've just had, you know, they're just wonderful times. And sometimes it's just doing walks on the beach or going to, there's a wonderful little tiki bar at the Marriott there, right on the, the water on the, or actually it's the Gulf, I guess, as opposed to the ocean, it's on the Gulf side. But anyway, just, just you know, just sitting and relaxing in the tiki bar and having drinks on the water and walking on the, as I say, looking for shells on the beach and taking the boat to Key West and having a great day, spending the day touring Ernest Hemingway's home in Key West, which as you know, home, artist's home and studio, this is supposed to be a writer, but also going to the bar that he had there, Sloppy Joe's, uh, and, and it's just an experience of taking the boat ride together. And as I say, it's just so natural. There's no, it's relaxed because we're all, they treat us like kids and we treat them like parents. It's just a really great relationship. So. A lot of fun fun times and visiting them and there the one time we did go and visit the last time all together Chris and Ed and I were actually walking along the beach looking for shells and sand dollars and things like that and it's really funny because many times we've experienced this many times where Chris ends up just going ahead and going off on his own and it's just Ed and I so there have been many a time so we were looking at shells and we were really engrossed in looking for sand dollars and shells and that type of thing Chris is nowhere to be found. He's gone up ahead. He's doing something else. He's always on the, you know, doing his own thing. And Ed said to me, and this has happened many times, you know that this is why people think that we're the couple. And this, again, is one of our, <laughs> this happens so often and not that we don't know where Chris is. But Ed and I are like engrossed in the moment and talking about whatever we're doing and experiencing it together. And it was just really funny just to be, just, just, relaxing and walking along and collecting shells and getting engrossed and all that. And he's like, yeah, you know, this is why people think we're the couple. And it's like, it's so true. This happens to us so many times. So just a fun kind of memory of our, our shell searching in Florida. So we've added the dry, two cups of flour so far. I'm going to go ahead and add the teaspoon. I have a teaspoon of baking powder that I'm going to add. So we're going to go ahead and set the flour aside. I'm gonna go ahead and add my one teaspoon of baking powder. Now I should tell you too, I don't watch a lot of, of TV, but Ed's dad, when we're down there, watch, oh, I got to make sure, whoop. Uh -uh. See, this is what happens when I'm not paying attention. I'm engrossed in the story, not paying attention to the baking. I almost put a tablespoon of baking powder in, which might have been interesting, instead of a teaspoon. So we're on it now. One teaspoon baking powder. Better make sure I've got the right stuff. Okay, yep, baking powder, one teaspoon. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and add, these are in sequential order of dry ingredients. So okay, we've done the flour, two cups, one teaspoon baking powder. I'm gonna go ahead and add a half teaspoon of salt, half teaspoon of salt. So as I said, I don't watch a lot of TV, but Ed's dad likes to watch a variety of different shows that I might not watch if I were not with, you know, sometimes you learn different things when you're with other people, which is always very interesting. And the time that we went to Florida, Bill had on the show Shark Tank. And I don't know what station it's on or whatever, because I'd actually never seen it before. And he would watch it every night, you know, after dinner, we'd just be kind of relaxing and so forth all together in the living room and he'd have Shark Tank on. And I think there was also a, a song show on too, like the, the Voice or something like that. But having watched it then successively each night, there was a point in the week where I'm already sort of saying, you know, you know that's not gonna work, they're never going to. So someone who's never watched it before, I sure had a lot of opinions about what people were pitching on Shark Tank by the end of the week. And it's only because I was sort of 
in an, it was inculcated with us or inundated with the show over the week's time. And so I was actually talking to the screen or the, the people on the, on the show by the end of the week. So that was just a fun kind of um, memory I have too of doing that with Bill. So we put in a half teaspoon of salt and now we're also gonna put in baking soda. Sometimes things don't have soda and powder at the same time, but this is one teaspoon of baking soda. So hopefully we should be able to get that right. Okay. After our almost, almost goof just a few minutes ago of having a tablespoon. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my one teaspoon of baking soda. And that is it for our dry ingredients. So I'm gonna go ahead and whisk it with my dough whisk. And then, like I said, I've already creamed the one and a half cups of sugar with my half cup of oleo. So then it says I need to add the eggs to the what I have creamed in my mixer. Then I'm gonna add my dry ingredients alternately with the milk, which is one cup of milk, alternately, and then I'm gonna add the vanilla at the end. So right now, you won't be able to watch me do that, but that's what I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm gonna add to the creamed mixture, I'm gonna add my two eggs, I'm gonna add my dry ingredients alternately with the milk, and at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and add one teaspoon of vanilla, and then we're gonna stir in the rhubarb at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead offline and do that, because I may mix her, it's hard for you to watch me do that and make with the sound of the milk. I wanted you to be able to see what the, batter looked like when I took it out of the mixer. It's very smooth, very creamy. Mm. Has a great flavor, good bat, you know, good flavor for this rhubarb cake. But I wanted you to see, I'm gonna go ahead and add my two cups of rhubarb, and they are supposed to be cut small. And you know by now that I like a little bit extra in my flavorings if I'm adding something to it. So I'm gonna, I actually put a little bit more than two cups of the rhubarb. And I, as I say, I do have the small cut sizes, but maybe I put two cups and a smidge more. But anyway, so that's what we're gonna go ahead and add that to our batter mixture. And we're just going to, you know, stir it, basically stir in the rhubarb. So I wanted you to be able to see this because if it's in my mixer, you can't see it. So. You know, you're taking my word for it that I've mixed it properly, like I've said. So we just wanna make sure the rhubarb is mixed nicely within the batter, because that's what we're gonna go ahead and put in our greased nine by 13 pan. So that's what we're gonna do right now. And then we're gonna go ahead and make the topping and put on top. So just as couldn't be easier for a nice summer kind of cake, you know, nothing says summer, well, like many fruits, actually. I guess this is a little more of an early summer. This is a little more midsummer, but rhubarb can be any time if that's, if you like rhubarb. So we're gonna go ahead and add that to our nine by 13 greased pan. And just spread out smoothly so it can receive this topping that we're gonna put on. So we'll do that. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. Make sure all of my rhubarb is off of the spatula. So I'm gonna sit this aside for just a minute to topping for the cake. We're gonna go ahead and add a half cup of sugar. I'm gonna mix this together. So we have half cup of our sugar. Then we're going to do one cup of coconut, which is an interesting combination. I have not used anything with coconut and rhubarb together, so this is a fantastic new combination for me. Maybe not for you, but for me. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. And then we just have a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. So, and you know, I love, mm, I love to smell the cinnamon. So we're just gonna add that quarter teaspoon of the cinnamon. And because I've actually already put my dough whisk, not thinking about this, I've already put it in the sink. We're just gonna use actually a simple whisk. It's, it's not quite the same, but you know, we will, we will make do. So we're just gonna mix that around. 
Again, just the cinnamon, the sugar, and the coconut. Mix it around fairly well because we're gonna, you know, put this over the, the rhubarb mixture. And we want that to be well mixed. And we're just gonna use our hands and we're just gonna sort of evenly yeah. over the rhubarb batter. So we have spent, like I said, a lot of time. We spend time with Ed in Ann Arbor quite a bit at his house and do, we do so many fun things and with his family and with Ed. We spent a lot of time in Romeo going to, you know, spending time during the Peach Festival and going to the parades and, and the nighttime mummers parade. And just, you know, hooking up with their different friends and that they have there and being welcomed in. You know, I always feel like once you are friends of Ed and or, or friends with Ed and his parents, then you're friends with all of their friends. And it's just a great big circle and network of people. And we become, you know, gotten to know a lot of their friends as well throughout the years. So it's been really a lot of fun. And interestingly enough, so like I said, treating us like kids, his mom and Ed's mom and dad, Bill and Madeline, were the ones who finished up some things on our wedding registry. Now, you have to understand, we were married, uh, this is our 20th year anniversary this year, but Ed's parents took the time to finish up a couple of items on our registry each year for anniversary, which was just, I can't even describe how, it's not the point of the things, it's the point of caring that much and thinking of you like their own kids. That is probably the most, the thing that it's so, I'm so grateful for. And it is true, they were Waterford wine glasses that we probably wouldn't have finished up the set on our own, but they made sure over the years for our different anniversaries that they, they completed our, our wedding registry years after the wedding registry was obviously done. I mean, we spent 20 years ago, but just the generosity and kindness of Ed's parents is something that you know, you carry that with you too. You know, we've talked about many times that you carry, all of these people grow you. They, whether they're your own parents or friends or family or friends of family, they help shape you in so many ways. And I am shaped by my husband's best friend's parents because it's all, everyone contributes to shaking you, shaping you and making you the person that you are. So very shaped by Bill and Madeline. They're the most gracious, wonderful, generous people. So just, just thinking about them today. Anyway, while we're making this, we're making this rhubarb cake. So we're going to go ahead and get this in the oven. Again, it's 350 degrees for 50 minutes, and then we will do a taste test when it comes out of the oven. Well, I want to tell you what I have been reading. Two books, one fiction and one nonfiction. The first one I want to tell you about is Rebel Chef in Search of What Matters by Dominique Crenn. And I think in the first episode, the very first episode on the No Need Country Bread, I was talking to you about her cookbook that she had been, just gotten. She talked about kind of her how she came to food and how she came to be part of Atelier Crenn in San Francisco. This is a very upfront personal autobiography of her journey from France to San Francisco and what really shaped her into becoming the chef that she is today and how her family and her context of where she comes from helped shape her and her sheer, how it's shaped, she's so shaped by her experiences as a young woman and as a child and how that's impacted her today. That's very interesting. So. I am currently reading that, so that's on my list. This is actually on my nightstand. And then what I have, what I would say reread is something for our book group next week. And it's a very popular right now, and it, there is a reason it is so popular right now, because it is absolutely a great fictional story, narrative. It's just absolutely phenomenal. So this is my second read. I had read it about a year ago, but reread it because of our book coming up, and so you always want to reread uh, the book that you're going to be talking about so it's a little bit fresher in your mind and some of those salient points are a little bit fresher. I mean, you generally know the overall story, but you just want to make sure some of those details are right. And this is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. And as I say, this is a reread, but I was completely transported again 
on rereading it a second time. And so many times when you reread something, a lot of you, know, you might not have picked up on all the details the first time around, and the second time when you're reading it for a different purpose or an intention, you tend to pick up a lot more details. So this is a coming of age story of a young woman that sort of transports or goes back to maybe her parents. And so it's the 50s, 60s, and early 70s of a young woman coming of age in the Carolina coast who they call the Marsh Girl. And what it's like to be abandoned by your mother and then your father and your siblings and what happens when you grow up around this very intensive immersion into the nature around you and how that shapes you. And then what is it like with a socialization when you do encounter other people and how people stereotype you based on something that has you really don't have any knowledge of and you make all these assumptions that are so untrue. So she grows up with all of sort of this, what I would call abandonment and ends up becoming a really strong young woman sort of as an aside of that. And at the end of the day, the townspeople are asked, well, we didn't do anything to change that stereotype. We didn't act upon our values of human decency and humanity to help shape this young woman. We just left her to fend for herself. So we cannot now say anything about that because we are the ones who've created that, not this young woman. But it's just a really great coming of age story of this young woman and what happens to her during this time. And she really becomes, she becomes a, becomes a nature writer. She has these, does these wonderful watercolors of the life, flora and fauna and animals of that, that Marsh Carolina coast area. And it's just, I don't know if I'm doing it justice, but it is just a really great fictional read and well done, a very great literary fiction and is a great read. So that's what I've been reading, Rebel Chef by Dominique Crenn and Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens as a reread to get ready for book group. Next. Some of the reasons or some of the things that bind you to people are these different little events that happen that make up your whole story together. When Chris and I got married 20 years ago, of course, we had our best friends. You know, Marcy was my maid of honor and Ed was our best man. So the two best friends were, we didn't have any other in the bridal party. So it was just Marcy is my maid of honor and Ed is the best man. And what was really kind of funny was that after the wedding, I and my dress could not fit in Chris's car. It could fit in my car because I had a large Buick Century. This is 20 years ago, just let's remember that. And Chris had a small Cavalier, but yet I couldn't drive with my dress on. And it was a simple dress that just had like a larger skirt to it. And Ed ended up driving me home back to our, our apartments. So the best man drove the bride home after the wedding. And for some reason, that is one of our favorite stories of our time together. It's just such a funny, funny thing. Again, this is why they think Ed and I are the couple. But Chris or Ed ended up driving me home after the wedding of just because of the circumstances of dress to ratio of car. So it's just one of our one of our favorite memories that we actually talk about quite often of what happened that night. It was just really funny. And it ended up staying, I think, well, he ended up staying overnight with us, but then opened up gifts with us and just was part of our, so our first night of, because we didn't leave for our honeymoon, it was, we were driving, we didn't leave until the next morning. So we spent the evening hanging, Ed hang, hung out with us and we opened gifts and talked and kind of relived the day. And it was just kind of funny that, yeah, the best man drove the bride home. Yep, that's what I'm sticking with. Well, the rhubarb cake is out of the oven. Like I said, we had it in for 50 minutes. Toward the end, I did cover it with a piece of foil so it wouldn't get so brown on top. But it's just this lovely golden brown rhubarb cake. I have gone ahead and cut out a piece for us to taste. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. As I said, I have not made this before, but I also have not had it before. So. We're gonna try it out, and as I say, love rhubarb, new combination with the coconut. Oh, oh wow. 
That is absolutely delicious. The texture with the coconut is that mixture on top with, mm, I had to have a second piece. That is so good. The cake itself, the rhubarb cake is so moist. And then with that coconut and the cinnamon and the sugar on the top that sort of baked in, it gives this wonderful texture. And you can taste each flavor. It's just a beautiful combination of texture and moistness and flavor with the rhubarb. It's absolutely delicious. So it's been nice to spend some time with Ed and his family today and their Aunt Marie's recipe, the rhubarb cake. And thinking about how often, really, we spend a lot of time with Ed and his family and have over the, well, of course, Chris has over the years with Ed because he's known him longer. But then, as I say, when I married into the, the friend's family mix, but Ed comes back and forth with us to New Hampshire. He's really close with Ed's par or Chris's parents. He's close with all of my friends. Even when we traveled to England several years ago, I think it was 2015, we were there for Christmas and the, the fireworks and so forth. And Ed was there separately visiting a good friend of his and we all met up at Yodam Ottolenghi's Spittlefields resta restaurant and had dinner together, had a wonderful meal together. Again, combining one of Ed's other friends with us and we're all you know, good friends, spent a lovely evening together, as I said, at Ottolenghi's and at Spittlefields in London. And just have had some great times traveling together, you know, and also Ed's parents loved to get together at around the holidays and treat Chris and I to different theatrical or musical events and a lovely dinner, just like they would for their kids. So over the years, we have attended many of a, gatherings at museums and art and theater and lectures and authors and just, it's such an, a great, loving, natural interaction together. And it's, it's seamless, I really should say. So what is this truly is if we are Bill and Madeline's kids and by also being a best friend, a sibling as well. So I count Ed and his parents and all of his family as really close family. Uh, we're friends and it really feel like we're all, all family. So I can't imagine life without any of them either. So they are as an integral part to our lives as anyone, as anyone we know really. So it's been a great day to be able to spend time with Ed and his family today. And there will be further adventures with them because we have traveled a lot and spent a lot of time together. So look forward to future adventures with Ed and his mom and dad, Madeline and Bill.